Today, we're going to break down the most essential concepts in artificial intelligence. We'll cover everything from basics to building AI models that could even replace some jobs, maybe even yours. We'll be using the curriculum from Stanford's famous AI course, CS221, which costs over $6,000 just for one class. We'll cover machine learning basics, linear regression, gradient descent, neural networks, and search. And don't worry, we'll keep it simple so anyone can follow along. By the way, this video is sponsored by Zero to Mastery, but more on them later. Let's dive in. First, let's start with a quick refresher. What is artificial intelligence? At its core, AI is the ability of machines to perform tasks that would normally require human intelligence. You might already be using AI every day, whether it's your phone recognizing your face or when Netflix suggests the next movie you might be interested in. So let's dive into the basics of machine learning. The first thing that you need to know is that AI, particularly the AI that powers much of what we use today, relies on machine learning. Machine learning is how computers learn from data to improve performance over time without being explicitly programmed to do so. So basically, instead of telling the machine exactly what to do line by line, we feed a lot of data and let it figure out patterns on its own. Next, let's go over the main types of machine learning models that are widely used. A lot of AI systems are based on reflex-based models called predictors. These are systems that take input like an image or a sentence and use learned patterns and predict on output. So let's break it down. Binary classification is when we predict one of two outcomes. For example, a system might determine if a credit card transaction is legitimate or fraudulent based on features like location, amount, and time. It's a classic yes or no prediction. Another type of prediction is called regression which predicts a continuous value, like estimating a housing price based on features such as size, location, and age. Unlike the binary classification, the output is a number, not a yes or no. Structured prediction involves predicting complex outputs like sentences or images. For example, in machine translation, the system predicts the entire sentence structure, not just individual words. Now, if some of these AI concepts don't fully click yet, that's completely normal. Understanding theory is one thing, but applying it is where real learning happens. That's why hands-on projects are so important in your learning. And if you're not sure how exactly to do that, check out Zero to Mastery. They focus on project-based learning, helping you apply your skills as you learn. Building projects is the best way to connect the dots and solidify your learning in hands-on way. They also offer step-by-step -step courses in AI and machine learning designed to take you from beginner to expert. If you want to dive deeper into machine learning, their TensorFlow for deep learning or Python developer course is a great place to start. If you would prefer more of a structured path, they also have an AI and machine learning engineer career path which lays out everything you need to learn in the right order. But it's not just the courses and the expert instructors that make Zero to Mastery great. When you join, you get access to an active tech community of over 400,000 students and instructors, so you'll always have support when you're stuck. Check out the link in the description to start learning today. And now let's get back to the video. Another type of model is linear regression model, which fits a line through data points to represent the relationship between an input, like the size of a house, and an output, like the price of that house. Imagine you have a graph with points that represent prices of the houses of different sizes. The goal of linear regression is to draw a line through those points that best predicts the price of the house based on its size. When you're setting up your model, the first thing to figure out is what kind of prediction it can make. Can it just make a straight line prediction or can it make a curved one? This is called the hypothesis class. Next, we need to measure how good the model is at making predictions. We do this with a loss function, which measures the difference between the model's prediction and the actual data. Finally, we need an algorithm to minimize the loss function and find the best line that fits the data. This is where things like gradient descent comes in. The gradient or train loss tells us which way to go to make the goal smaller the fastest. This process is called gradient descent. We start with a guess like a zero and we keep adjusting it for a certain number of steps. Each time we adjust by a small amount, 
which we call the step size n, and we repeat this process for a certain number of times, which is t, which we call epis. Next is linear classification. This is similar to regression, but for problems where the output is one of two categories. For example, in a spam detection system, we might want to classify emails as either spam or not spam. You could think of the problem like trying to draw a line in a 2D space that separates spam from non-spam emails. There are two important ideas that help us measure this. One to consider when evaluating how well a model is doing is called score. This tells us how confident the model is in its prediction. Another key concept is the margin, which tells us how strong or weak the model's prediction is. A larger margin means the model is more confident in its decision, and a smaller margin means it's less short. While the linear model work well for simple problems, they're not so great when we're trying to tackle more complex patterns. And this is where neural networks come in. A neural network is a more advanced model that is inspired by the way our brain works. Just like how our brain has neurons that work together to process information, they can learn complex nonlinear patterns in data, making them useful for tasks like image recognitions or speech understanding. When we're dealing with more complex decisions like solving a puzzle, we can also use a new approach called search, which involves planning a sequence of actions. For example, in games like chess, the AI thinks of a range of possible actions, picks the best sequence, and continuously update its choices based on the outcomes. One of the foundational tools for a search problem is called Markup Decision Process, MDP. This is a way to help AI make decisions in situations where outcomes are uncertain and can change over time. One of the key challenges in search problems is balancing exploration, which is trying out new things, with exploitation, which is sticking with what works best. To solve this, we can use various different learning methods like value iteration, Monte Carlo, Sarsa, and Q learning. Okay, that was probably a lot of information, but congratulations, you're one step closer to understanding AI. There's really so much to learn in AI, and it's also evolving fast. So don't worry if everything didn't really click right away. But if you're wondering how long it will actually take to learn these concepts and become an AI engineer, this next video will break it all down. So I'll see you there.